I believe that we are living in days in which we really have to ponder what we are doing, what we are thinking, and what is our prospect for the future. For this I have chosen a scripture which is in the second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. It is not what I'm going to preach on but I have taken this scripture as an introduction to what we will be uh, uh, devolving through the morning. The scripture says like this, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. What a description. Without natural affection, truth breaker, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despises of those that are good. They are traitors, heavy high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, stay away. These are the society in which the Apostle Paul described that will happen in the last days. And as I look around me, I can just see that this is what is happening. Jesus talked about the last days, and he talks about wars, rumors of war, kingdom against kingdom, and so on and so on. But Paul talks about what happened to you, me, and in society. The things that are happening that we have to face every day. It is important thereof. Then these last days, we are not distracted by the things that we see and we hear, but that we keep our attention focused upon the Word of God and the Kingdom of God. These are the days of distraction for us. Politically, we cannot any longer trust those who we pay to take care of us. They seem to be able to lie in many ways and distract our attention from what actually is happening in the world today. Religiously, of course, we are concentrating on mega churches. No longer we are interested in the goodness, in the following whatever God wants us to do here on earth as an individual saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. We are looking at the mega church. We want the big things. And it seems somehow that they have convinced me that probably those big things might be the right thing. But then I have to focus in those mega churches and find that many people are not, at, they are going to church, but they are not really in any knowledge whatsoever of what is the will of God in their life. Therefore, religious is also defeating my purpose. In the way of financially, of course, in the old days we used to get up in the morning and to trust God for the provision of the day. We are going out and we ask God and God will always provide for us to be able to bring home the things that are necessary for the support of our family. But today we don't have to do that anymore because we can always trust on not on God, but on our government. We have been distracted from trusting in God to trust into the government. We have been distracted from trusting to reality to, to reality. To, we are distracted to trust in the, uh, uh, in the political system. We have been distracted for whatever we were supposed to be doing for the kingdom of God. It is important, therefore, that we consider our belief in the ob object of our faith for what is the reality of what is the reality of the Word of God. For only the reality of the Word of God will make us survive here on this earth until Jesus comes. Without the Word, we cannot survive. Because the word is the food that will feed our spirit and will feed our spirit in order to be in touch 
and in the fullness of what God wants us to do. We are confused somehow. In Melbourne, we had a lady in the church, a young lady actually. She was um, not paralytic, but she could not stand on her legs. Her legs were not straight, and therefore she was having a, a, a pension because she couldn't work or she couldn't do anything, and she had to be uh, uh, supported by the government to do that. One night we were having a Holy Spirit revival meeting, and the, the emphasis was on the healing. And this lady, uh, where people were coming to the front to be prayed for, they were healed, healed by the power of God. And there was such a tremendous presence of the, of the power of God that the healing were happening everywhere in that particular place. Two of the ladies went to this sister. They picked her up and they said, go up to the front and be prayed for. God will heal you. And she raised her hands and began to shout and say, please don't pray for me. Don't pray for me. If God heals me, I lose my pension. Her belief was right, but her attention was wrong. Sometimes what we believe is right, but what we do is wrong because our attention has been distracted by the things that are surrounding our life. May God help us to stick with the word of God. There is a cross there, by the way. I didn't know that. Isn't that nice? My question this morning is this. I want to examine myself. Do, what do I believe? What do you believe? Let me share you my belief. I believe in God the Father. He's not just somebody up there in the air, an old man with long hair and long beard. He's, all, he's as youthful as anybody could be. And he's the father of all people. And he's the creator of heaven and earth. He was there from the very beginning. And through him and by him, all things that are made are made for his glory and for his power. I believe in that God, which is supernatural in power. Science tell me that sometimes, and I, this happened while I was having a debate with somebody, that somehow in time of eternity, there was a big bang. And that big bang did happen. And when I asked the man that told me, I said, what was that big bang? He said, well, we don't know. And I said, but I know that big bang was the word of God. And the word is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And through his word, the world was made for the glory of God. I believe. And I don't want to lose my belief. Because it is important, especially in my young age, that I stand on the belief in which I have in my heart and which is based upon the word of God and it does change not. It's an infinite love, this great God, the creator of heaven and earth. He somehow loved me so much that he became my father. He also my, became my father because he comes to help me anytime I have any need of help and consolation. When I need some comfort, he's there to comfort me. When I need something, he's there to provide it for me because he has become my father. He also, he has become my provider, for he provides for me every day, every year of my life. He has been providing, and my man, I have many years in my life, and he has been providing every day, and he never had lack of anything, because he became my father and my provider. He's also my companion. I live in a big house and I'm home by myself. Many times I have no phone calls, I see nobody. So I keep walking up and down the corridor of my house. 
And as I walk up and down, I keep thinking my mind upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And I keep talking to my father and say, Father, I need you, your companionship right now. And it doesn't take too long when you start thinking about God, when you start thinking about his power, that the Holy Spirit come and refurnish your soul and your body. And you feel like you're living in heaven. You're not any longer at home, but you are in the presence of God by the power of his spirit. And that is what we want. I told my legs it shouldn't give me any more trouble. You know what? If you believe it, the leg has to obey you. It actually is obeying me. I have no problem. John first, uh, John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, the word was the the word was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And life was the light of all men. So you keep that scripture. I hope you have some pencil and paper so that you can keep this is the believing in my God. My second point of believing, and the church should believe, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not just a prophet. He is not just a man that by accident came to live in the world 2,000 years ago. He is the Son of God. For in the beginning he was with God. In the beginning, he was God, and he was with God, and therefore, he is the Son of God, and I must believe that he is the Son of God, unless I believe that he is the Son of God, then what I want, I cannot receive, because he does not have any power to give it to me. But he is the Son of God. I also believe that he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man could not conceive him. Because he could not have my blood and your blood. Because your blood and my blood, after the fall of Adam in the Garden of Eden, it became faulty and it became not good anymore. And it was under the curse. So the blood that Jesus had to receive is by the power of his Father. Before the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, when the blood was pure, and that blue purity of blood is the only blood that can be accepted by the by the, uh, uh, by the sacrifice sacrifice on the cross. Maybe you didn't know that. He was also born by, born by the Virgin Mary. She only bare him. The Holy Spirit created him. He was crucified for the salvation of all men. I believe that. He died on the cross. He was buried. But death could not hold him or contain him. The third, the third day, he arose. And he's alive today. He's ascended to the heaven. And he is alive. He is alive. Can I repeat that to you? He is alive. We are not serving a dead God who was buried and dead and finished and done, we are serving a God which is alive. And because he is alive, he can be anywhere. And because he is alive, he can be in any, in any place, and he can do anything that he wants. And I believe this morning that he is here, and he is listening to your heart and my heart, and he's, and he's working upon our mind in order that we put our mind directly into the present and in focus with God. He is alive. He's not dead. He is alive. There is a song that says, and he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He, I wish I was a singer. He talks with me. I wish I could be like Pavarotti or Mario Lanza or 
all the lenses that you can measure and measure. I wish I had a song. I ask the Lord that when I go to heaven, I want to be six foot tall and I want blonde hair. I want brown eyes and I want to be a seraphim. <laughs> and somebody said to me, why a seraphim? Because the seraphims are those who sing and pray before the presence of God. Then I can sing because I have a perfect body. Hmm, never mind. <laughs> yes, my friend, he's alive. And I also believe that he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And right now, He's advocating for me. He's saying, Father, forgive him. That sometimes he says some stupid things and he says them in the wrong way. But Lord, you forgive him because I have died on the cross for him. And I thank God for that. And one of these days, we are going to meet him in the air. I must believe that I am going to meet him in the air. Because my friend, if we, I don't believe that, that I'm going to meet the Lord and going to be with the Lord. I'm going to create a paradise right here on earth that when the Lord calls me, I don't want to go. <coughs> I have, in the ministry of course, I had very few people. And there was a certain guy, certain way, he was not a Christian. But I went to see him at the hospital when he was at the last hours of his life. And I was trying to tell him about God and about other things. And every time I mentioned the name of Christ, he said, yes, yes, Christ, but please give me another, another, another moment. Give me a little bit more. I want to live a little bit more. I don't want to live yet. I don't want to live yet. Because those who don't believe in God, they don't want to live. They have made their substance here on earth. And they don't want to leave everything behind and be with the Lord. But as far as I'm concerned, I have nothing down here, my friend. And when the Lord comes and he wants to take me up in the air, I will be there as happy as I could be. It doesn't make any difference. I don't want to wait for another minute. I don't want to wait for another hour. But when the day will come and my days are over, I want to go because I'm going to be with him forever. I believe that. If I didn't believe that, I would have a problem. Matthew 123, therefore the Lord himself shall descend, shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel. Just to give you a scripture on what Jesus was born in here. Now let us go to something else. This is not all that I believe. I have been told by the word of God that I have to believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. That is one of the things in which we have to do. That is what God has given to us in order that we can do and be for us and, and, and help us. For the Holy Spirit is the help that I need to, be, to live a victorious life. I need him to survive and advise me in everyday decision before I act. I have to ask him. I need him. I need him to survive. I cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. Especially now that I'm by myself. If I didn't have the assurance of the Holy Spirit in my heart and in my life, it's suddenly I am so taken in by the power of the Spirit of God that I begin, they begin to raise my hands like a crazy man walking up and down the aisles of my, my home and praising God and glorifying God and telling and speaking in tongues. My friend, if I couldn't do that, I would be dead by now. I need him. I need him for survival. I cannot survive without him. And he is given to me so that I would survive. He's the one who advised me every day the decision that I have to make. How many times in your life 
before you make a decision, regardless of what that decision it might be. It's an important decision, not important decision, but I believe that for Christians, all decisions are important. What do I do? The first thing that I do, I sit down and I say, what would Jesus do if he was in my place? Before you make the decision, before I make the decision, I will sit there and say, what would Jesus do in these circumstances if he was here now and he was in my place and he was wearing my shoes? What would he do? It's important to remember that we can only do what Jesus wants us to do. Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He, you will be my witnesses unto the, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That is the promise. I believe in the church. Now I know that people choose their churches the way they want to, but I believe in the church. I believe that the church is not just, a, the church is a universal church. I believe that the church is from everywhere. It's from all people, of all nation, of all color. They are the people, the, the, the ecclesia, they are the people of God. The church, the, 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 um, uh, the, um, the, uh, the church, it's an invitation. I go to church because it's an invitation to togetherness. And that is for you, for me, and whosoever will receive him. We come together to praise God. We come together for one thing, to, pray, to let the world know that we are the sons of God. And whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. We are coming together as a church, and I believe in the coming together of the church because they are the witness to the world by the love that we have one for the other. I believe in the communion of the saints. They are a group of people, <laughs> different from all the others, because they have one mind. And even through persecution or hardship, they stand together, help one another, and the love of Christ flow through their heart. What is the church? It's a group of people where the love of God flows into their heart. And this morning, if you are coming to church and the love of God does not flow into your heart, it means that you have to ask him to come into your heart and be able to be part of that group of people who love, who the love of God is intense and glorious upon them. I remember was the older, was the oldest one of the, in the family. And when the persecution were on and my mom and dad would go to church, what you call church, but it would be a group of people that meet somewhere to praise God and to pray together. My father, I think I said this before, but my mother would give me a piece of paper with a telephone number and a name. And because I was the oldest, she would say to me, if we don't come back tonight, just happen to go to jail, and we are not coming back tonight. This is the telephone number that you will dial on the phone. The lady on the other side will answer. And she will come and take care of you. The church is a group of people who take care of each other. A church is a group of people who not only take care of each other because the love of God is in their heart and in their life. There is no impurity when it comes to the fellowship of the church because the Holy Spirit is the one who unites them together. We are united by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus who comes and refreshes us every Sunday when we come together. I believe that. I must believe that. I 
we must achieve as a church, as the group of saints, we must achieve one mind and have the, to have the moving of the Holy Spirit and to have revival. We must achieve one mind. It is not that you have to think the way I think. When we receive one mind, it doesn't mean that you eat what I eat, you dress the way I dress. That is stupidity. One mind is rich together, that when we are together, I forget what I have left outside of that door. And I'm here for one only purpose. And the purpose is to have fellowship with my brother and fellowship with my sister. And together to praise and glorify the name of God and come up to the presence of God. And together with the angels glorify his name. That's why we come together. That's how we achieve one mind. It is not that you eat what I eat, but it is because we have one desire, only one hope and one desire, and that is to praise the name of the Lord. There is a, in the book of Acts, you, chapter 4, verse 32, is written, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart, one soul, neither having anything by their own, but they all possession, they were in common and they shared everything. Now I heard a lot of criticism about what that church did in those days. Some say it was wrong, some say it was right. But as far as I'm concerned, there is no wrong, there is no right. What the church did that they, according to Acts chapter 4 verse 32, they share one common thought, that they were one, only one, before the presence of God. And when we achieve that then we can achieve revival my brother I believe in the resurrection of the believers don't worry I'm not going to go to I believe in the resurrections of the believers I believe in the raptures of the bride without but a bride that is without spot or wrinkle the pure bride, the one who are filled with the Holy Spirit and who are prepared to meet Jesus Christ in the cloud. Yes, I am going to be there. I want to be purified every morning. You know, every time we come to church and we have communion, we actually have communion and we talk about a lot of things, but do you know that, that the, 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 uh, the semblance of that blood that you are taking for in that cup of the, the blood the, is the blood of Jesus who purifies you. And if Jesus would come after you have taken communion, he will take you immediately up in the air because you have been purified by the blood of Jesus. I believe. For if we are planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Ephesians 5.27 That he might present himself a glorious church, pure, perfect, before the presence of God. I also believe, because sometimes I look in the mirror, my friend. Do you ever look in the mirror? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you like what you see, but sometimes you just don't like what you see in the mirror. And somehow in the last few days, whatever I look in the mirror, I don't like it. So what I did, I took a picture of when I was much, much, much younger. <laughs> and I put it on one side, so that when I look, I don't look in the mirror, but I look at the picture. And the picture looks much, much better. I can never tell you how handsome I was. <laughs> and I wasn't there. 
my wife will, my, my wife, my mother will hit me on the head. I believe that we will appear as we are being created to be the regenerated sons and daughters and to be with him forever and to see him in the fullness of his glory. That is what our aim should be. You will not see my earthly body, but you will see my spirit as he was created. And he was created perfect by the hand of the master who creates everything in the right thing. First John chapter 3 verse 2. You read it at home. Say First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 18. Now my friend, those are the things that I believe. How do the things that I believe influence me? How the things that I believe influence my life today? Am I really so sold into the presence of God that as the early church, I am ready to go into the fiery arenas of the Colosseum to be burned alive? or to be thrown into the arena and when the lions and the tigers will come and they will dislime my body will I be uh, will, 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 will I still be believing in the Lord Jesus Christ the way I be, really believe would I shy away will I go away or will I stand there in my ground History tells us that in the beginning, the, the growth of the church was re referred to because the people that were dying on the Colosseum and they were dying on the prisons, they were dying with a song in their heart and with the songs in their lips and they were praising and glorifying the name of the Lord and the people could not understand why these people trust and believe in their God so much that they could not believe and trust in anybody else. So they gave their heart to the Lord. Lord, I believe, but please increase my faith. In Luke chapter 17, verse 5, the apostle said unto the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. Maybe that's what we should do today is to ask God to increase our faith so that what we believe become not just something of yesterday but it becomes something that we put into effect every day every moment of our life so that the glory of God will shine about around us the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God and the world is waiting for the manifestation, your manifestation, as a son or a daughter of God. And the only way they can see it is by the tremendous love that we have, one for the other. Go, Lord Jesus, increase my faith. Is that the desire of our heart? If that's what we want, we can achieve and have it, because he will give it to us. God bless you. I'm getting tired. Thank you. Glory, 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 glory. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, my brother.